I call it alternative politics, which is not alternatives to politics because that would be dangerous. Not political alternatives that you routinely get in the country every five years, but alternative politics, which is based on alternative vision, which is based on alternative ways of building an organization, alternative ways of imagining politics. The last two years in our country have seen a breakthrough. And I'm not speaking only of my party. My party happens to be one small slice, one expression of something that's happening in the country. What is that new thing? In the last two years, the country has seen a very, very unusual burst of energy, of hope. People have started associating the word hope with politics, which was impossible. I mean, earlier you didn't even associate these two words. So there is hope, there is energy. For the first time, after a very, very long time, maybe after three decades or so, some people with talent, energy, have offered themselves for political life. So the talent pool of public political life has expanded suddenly in the last two years. And at moments, it has appeared that it may be viable. It might actually work. When Delhi election results come, suddenly for a large number of Indians, it's a new sensation, oh my God, it's possible. Something can actually be done. That's an extraordinary asset for any society, not just for one party, parties can come and go. It's an ex this hope is an extraordinary asset for a society. This is what we've had for the last two years. Do we have challenges? Of course, huge challenges. When Delhi results came, someone asked me to comment on it. I inversed what Neil Armstrong had said when he stepped on the moon. I said, it's a giant leap for a small party like us, but it's a tiny step for reforming and improving democracy in our country. It's a tiny step that we have taken. The country has taken. Have we suffered setbacks? Yes, we have. Have we made mistakes? Yes, we have. I was listening to all the stories about startups yesterday, and I kept comparing ourselves to those startups. Fantastic beginning, difficult phase, when you felt like giving up, but you somehow continued and you said, I must continue. And I noticed that in every single story, there comes a phase when you feel like giving up, when you say, God, no hope left there but you continue because of some dream. That's precisely what alternative politics is going through in our country today. Yes, it's a tough time. Yes, there has been a breakthrough. Yes, there is a tough time. But some people must continue, not because of their personal convictions, but because there's something bigger at stake. They must continue mindful of the challenges. There is a short-term challenge of sustaining and scaling up. There is a medium-term challenge of creating an organization which is both a movement and a party. And there is a long-term challenge of reimagining what it means to do politics itself. That's what gets me finally to the three beautiful words that you have used. Disrupt, transform, create. That's what politics is all about. Disrupt agitate on the street. Yes, the history of democracy tells you nowhere in the world has democratic transformations taken place without agitations, struggles on the street. Transform through elections, through creating energies, change the balance of power. Yes, that's important. Transforming through mainstream electoral means. Create. Politics is not merely about 
contesting elections and being in governance, though governance itself is a mode of creation, but also constructive work. When Fernandez still told us yesterday that they have, what, 53 women pilots? I thought that was politics at its best. He may not recognize it as politics, but for me, any transformation in the given equations of power is politics at its very best. And it is to that politics that I would wish to invite all of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Yadav. We've got um, quite a few audience questions. So I thought I'll combine a few questions because a lot of them seem relatively repetitive. So I, I think the key question here is you had a phenomenally great opportunity in Delhi and um, that opportunity appears to have been let go off and uh, the results in the Lok Sabha elections also don't seem to have gone in your favor. Uh, so the real question here is, so what's the next step and how do you intend to keep the aspirations of the people or the ideology you stood for? Because it appears the ideology seems to have worked, but there seems to have been a bit of an issue in the execution. So what are your thoughts? I understand what you're saying. You are saying, we liked the idea, but you've messed it up. That's basically <laughs> what many of you are saying. And as I said, standing here, standing in this room, I would not pretend that we did not make mistakes. And listening to you for the last 24 hours gives me courage to stand up here and say, yes, we made mistakes. Like a startup, we got some things perfect. At some crucial junctures, we made errors of judgment. Were these judgments, errors of judgment, fatal? It might look to you as though it was. I would hope to persuade you that that is not the case. In what you have called, and I look at the question there about Lok Sabha election and so on, because the first two questions are in a sense interlinked. It might look as though the people of India rejected us, rejected this idea. But just think about it. Is it, are we discussing the result of the elections or are we discussing the expectations that we had given ourselves? In many ways, the results of Delhi elections spoiled us. We contested elections for the first time, got 28 seats, got these many votes. Everyone started believing and many of us also started believing that this is what would happen every time we contest. As business leaders, you know that this doesn't happen every day. So next time it did not happen. The trouble is that we started expecting something very different. To my mind, in what is considered a very bad election for Aam Aadmi Party, what have we achieved? More about nearly 12 million votes in a wave election where people had made up their mind who they wanted as PM of this country. Still 12 million people invested in this hope called Aam Aadmi Party. We went beyond one state. We were a table with one leg called Delhi. Now we have two legs. I agree a two-leg table is not a great table, but it's better than a one-legged table. So we have Delhi and Punjab. At a most conservative estimate, we have about one lakh volunteers in the country who spent substantial amount of their time during election campaign, campaigning for something which would get them nothing personally. In a purely selfless way, they went and campaigned, which is a huge asset for a country. And we made it a shade more embarrassing for these mainstream political parties to do what they used to do in the past. So some things have happened. Now is the time for us to reflect, to consolidate, to think about scaling up in a way which has more sustainability. 
In one way, in one sense, I almost feel grateful that we are off the media radar, that no one talks about it, us. That gives us the breathing time that a new organization needs. Gives us time to sort out things internally, to have a clear roadmap and move ahead. All I can say is that for the next five years, we have our roadmap quite clearly cut out for us. BJP is in power, Congress is almost finished. So there is party in power, there is very little opposition. Our challenge is to be principal and constructive force of opposition for the next five years, so as to be able to become a viable political force in at least three or four more states other than Delhi and Punjab. If we do that, then our, our journey is more robust than it might look today. Um, two more questions. One is, um, if we look at the entire process, you talked about disrupt, transform, and create. Now, given the state of the situation right now you are in, will you go back to the disrupt stage, or will you try and reform in the transform stage? Sorry, 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 the last bit? I'm saying that given that we have disrupt, transform, and create, as we look at democracy moving forward, we look at a scenario where there is an element of disruption that's required, after which there's an element of transformation before we move to creativity. Under the current circumstances, would the, how would you visualize going forward? Would disrupt be the first stage again, or you've gone past that, and you will not try and look at the transformation aspect? In other words, will we have more dharnas? <laughs> I don't think that's really what I meant, but I'm saying in terms of conceptualization and the way forward, would you still go back to the three-step process? Yes, sure. Uh, it has to be a combination of these, and uh, it is true that uh, the public image that we acquired was of an organization which for, focuses more on one, as one of the colleagues pointed out to me, you are good at opposition, <laughs> uh, but you need to really convince us that you know governance too, which I think is a very fair criticism. Whatever I might think of my own organization, whatever I know, it's the public perception that matters. In the public eyes, we need to convince people, we need to convince people like you that we take governance seriously that we are credible, that we can be trusted with decision-making, which is so vital to the nation. Um, we have done a lot. We have worked on our policy positions. We have spent one year actually working on our policy positions. We have reflected carefully about our own journey and about how these three elements should be balanced. I agree. Disrupt, disrupt, disrupt is very poor politics. It has to be a, a dialectic of disrupt, create, construct, and so on. So of course we need to do that. I, all I can say at the moment is that we are at the moment focused on the third one. Internally within our organization, we are doing something called Mission Vistar, which is building the organization bottoms up creating stable, robust structures within the organization where uh, the decision-making takes place from below. And we are also carefully reflecting on questions of policy, policy positions, and coming up with responses uh, which are somewhat different than our image might have suggested. But these things take time before, they, before public begins to believe in it. And that is the only real test, so I agree. Thank you, Professor Yadav. I think we have sort of run out of time. But thank you very much for uh, your participation in this meeting. We really appreciate it.